An independent inquiry into child sexual abuse in the UK is planning to grill lawmakers and priests over their alleged involvement in cover-ups. The head of the inquiry, Justice Lowell Goddard, says that she will carry out 12 wide-ranging and parallel hearings spanning public institutions, politicians and churches. The committee has already launched a helpline for those wishing to contact the committee with relevant information. New Zealander Goddard, who took over the inquiry in July, says investigation into people of public prominence would give a voice to victims and survivors. The inquiry, which will last at least five years and cost about 18 million pounds, was set up in 2014 after a series of scandals. Some of the abuse cases go back to the 1950s and involve churches, media personalities and politicians. Rodney Shakespeare is a political commentator joining us from London. Rodney Shakespeare, uh, is this going to first of all be legally binding? And given the fact that you have politicians involved perhaps, do you think that anything can result out of this? Uh, first of all, this inquiry is being headed by uh, a New Zealand judge who happens to be a woman. Now that's very, very significant. You see, in the UK, uh, so many things are hidden up essentially by Freemasonry. Uh, and in this particular uh, subject, and the allegations of the Westminster uh, a sex uh, abuse ring against abuse against children, um, it's rather important that you have such a person in charge of the inquiry. Now, the actual inquiry uh, will provide a secure a comfortable situation for people to come forward and to tell their story. This, of course, will not be in public, and there are restrictions. But the inquiry goes very, very wide. It goes to specific institutions, and then it has themes, for example, children's care homes, and then there are ones like the, the Anglican Church, the Roman Catholic Church, and the Westminster political structure. In respect to the Westminster political structure, it has to be said that over the years, dossiers and files have been sent, and then they all mysteriously disappear. So it's about time that we did make a, a, a big effort to say that to, to, to those who are victims, is that you are going to be listened to in circumstances where you can be completely confident you will be listened to. Out of that, there may be there's sufficient uh, evidence and in situation where uh, criminal uh, prosecutions can follow. But at this stage, it is basically about providing the circumstances in which witnesses can come forward and speak in confidence to people who understand uh, their situation and who wish to listen to what they have to say. So, so based on what you're saying, if it's going to be held uh, behind closed doors, do you think that a lot of this information is not going to uh, make its way into a court case against uh, the relative party? At this stage, it's behind closed doors. Uh, but if then there is sufficient evidence, remember that there's a distinction between those who, 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 who will talk about their experiences. And then the next question is, Will they, in fact, be prepared that their evidence goes forward? That's the further down, down the stage. So um, a lot of this will, will not lead to criminal prosecutions, but some of it will. But really, it's about uh, saying to everybody, this is now a big subject which is taken seriously. Those who have been abused can feel a lust that they're being heard. And yes, in particular circumstances, there will be criminal prosecutions. But at this stage, this is purely the sort of the opening investigations and ensuring that people feel confident they can come forward and uh, uh, things can be quietly discussed beforehand. Thank you for that. Ronnie Shakespeare, political commentator from London.